Hello, and welcome to the One Process video. <laughs> I'm Dominic, the writer and editor of the blog Standing in an Open Field. And with me today, I have Ken Kelly and Bridget Hansul, who have created the One Process Workshop, which I had the rare treat of attending just a few months ago in Las Vegas, Nevada. Bridget and Ken, would you please share something with us about what is the one process? Well, it's an intensive workshop, as you know, because you got to be there. And it really helps lead people into the process of awakening. If they've already experienced the beginning of the process of awakening, that can help them go deeper. Yeah, maybe say a word about awakening, uh, because for some people it's very, very clear what it is. And maybe mm -hmm. others could wonder what it means or what we mean when we use this word. And well, very basically said, we could say that awakening is just the realization that what we are is not limited to the, the, the character, the small self, the person. And it's much more than that. And it can have a lot of names depending of who is talking about it, it can be awareness, consciousness, God, uh, oneness. And so awakening is really getting to realize this true identity of ours. Awesome. Where did this originate? Where'd you guys come up with this? Well, it started with workshops that we used to give that were based around the one question, the teaching that I'd been giving for quite a few years. And we decided to shift it more into its present incarnation. Well, yeah, actually the, the workshop we used to give before the one process were indeed based on the one question. And what we noticed is that to be able to receive the one question teachings from the right place, it was really needed to be already into the awakening continuum. So we decided to put together a workshop that would allow people to get there, to be able to hear what was said from this other place, which is not, again, not the, the small self, awareness, oneness, this unconditioned state that we are. How did you get started doing this? This isn't like something people just come out of nowhere. You must have some background. Would you like to share a little bit about how you sort of leaned into this? Well, <laughs> you go, go ahead. Or maybe not. <laughs> yeah, we, we can. It's We'd love to share it, yeah. <laughs> Well, I've always liked to share, and this was kind of an experience for me throughout my whole life, this sense of being conscious of awareness, aware of consciousness. So it just always seemed to be there. I can't really remember a time when it wasn't. So this recognition, this realization of oneness. So throughout my whole life, there's been just a reincorporation over and over again of different things to try to expound on that, to share that, to extend it to other people. So that's how through different things, different life situations, I've either come closer or went further away from that through different activities. And now it's just really come to where this is the only focus. This is the only thing that seems to be present. And it's not really like that there's any doing going on. It's just showing up and being present. And then that's what happens in the workshops. We're just there and it happens. Maybe something I could say about coming to that is, you know, since I was very young, I had this call, this quest about something that was deeper in life that what meet the eyes. And mm -hmm. uh, it was quite a long quest for me. I became a physics engineer because of that, then a psychologist, a psychotherapist. And finally, actually, I got to the point where this sense of quest and this yearning found an end and something could relax. And I really want to allow other people to find that too, because for a lot of them, it can be the quest of a lifetime. And it doesn't have to be, actually. That's really the discovery that I made after decades, that it doesn't have to be a, a lifetime quest. It can be found in a much quicker time. And that's what we want to tell people, share with people, for the ones who are looking for that. It's not for everybody, but the ones who feel this call inside, then there are, we could say, answers. Actually, it's not really answers, but something to be found. <laughs> Uh, which doesn't have the nature that usually we think we will find. So that's it. 
Yeah, that brings up a good point because typically a lot of people like to go to workshops with some end goal in mind. And the end goal of this is to awaken. It's not about achieving anything per se, a better life, you know, all the different things that people can aspire to. It's just about getting started on that path or going further on that path if you're already in that path, which really everyone is anyhow, uh, whether we kind of realize it or not, it's all always evolving seemingly, but it's always there. So it's interesting. Are there prerequisites? Who could come to this sort of thing? Well, really anyone could come to the workshops. Yeah, they're, they're not formal prerequisites, but there is one, which is uh, to have this desire to wake up because actually this desire is the main ingredient. And I would say it's even more the symptom of what is already happening. And coming to the workshop is just you know, something that will seem to happen too. But so this desire is crucial because uh, indeed it seems to help inform <laughs> what is uh, unfolding. So your intended target audience then would be people who have this desire already or maybe who are curious about this. Yeah, right, because not everybody knows what the heart is longing for. It's true that there can be a sense of quest or you know a sense of lack of something in life and you don't know really what it's about but what you feel is that there is something uh, more you want from life and even if you have a great life with money friends uh, family career whatever sometimes there is this feeling that something is still lacking and so that could be also a symptom, if you want, that maybe there is something for you in this, even if it's not felt as an explicit desire to wake up. Sometimes people don't know what really it means to wake up, and it's not totally fine. It's also a perfect opportunity for people that have been long-time practicers of some type of meditation, or almost what we think of as long-time seekers of an awakening. Because many people spend so much of their life, it seems, doing something, searching for this, and to no avail. The practice they're using doesn't really fit them, or a myriad of different reasons why it's not working. This workshop sometimes and quite often can seem to help them find something that really works that helps them start to get in touch with this this whole sense of awakening, which was never present before. So sometimes it's really great what can happen. So it's sometimes acts as a catalyst indeed yes. for something to budge yeah. that's that's kind of amazing so it's not like you're actually giving somebody something that they don't already have you're just sort of like inviting something to sort of start or maybe budge a little bit yeah yeah and you could even say actually what is unfolding is unfolding and so indeed the workshop is not really the cause of what's happening but it turns out that people will come to the workshop and it will happen and that's just how it's unfolding by itself actually that's beautiful is this meditation there are a lot of people meditation is millions of people do meditation meditations in time magazine meditation is on tv Meditation is in movies. Is this meditation? Well, there's certain components that can be thought of as meditative. It depends. Meditation, what is the purpose of people when they meditate? If they meditate, you know, to have less stress, to feel better in their life, to be more focused, then that's not the same purpose than this workshop because this workshop is about really waking up. So for people who meditate with that purpose, then you could say there is some meditative component, but it's not the most frequent in the workshop. The method we use could be said being meditative, but it's rarely really formal seated meditation. We don't spend eight hours on a mat or something during yeah. the day. Hmm. Yeah, you could say maybe what would more describe the, the methods. It's, you know, methods that help expand awareness or it's a broader category of methods that are not always meditation even if there is some of them uh, where do people sign up well we have a website it's the one process.com it's just the one process.com i'm going to put the one process.com on my blog oh wait you already have a the one process.com page that's right. On this blog, standing in an open field, has a page. 
Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you. If there was one question that you wish people would ask that they don't, what would it be? I would turn it around and ask them to ask themselves, just who are they? Who are you? Thank you both, Ken Kelly and Bridget Hansel, for appearing on the first live Standing in Open Field video. This has <laughs> been an absolute pleasure. And thank you, anyone, for watching and theoneprocess.com. There you have it. Well, thanks again. This has been uh, lovely to see you. Thank you, Dominic. It's great to see you, thank too. You thank you, Dominic. Much.